we have a choice piece of brisket and we're going to use the IQ 110 to cook it today on for my injection today I'm going with a simple solution of beef stock and a tablespoon of Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce to every cup. The rub I'm using today is one I got from an ebook I got offline. It has a bunch of spices in it, a little bit of sugar, but no pepper. So I'm adding the pepper today. Trimmed off a much of the fat so that the fat cap is down to about a half an inch. And then scored the fat so that the rub can get down in between it to the meat. Now I'm going to inject it, rub it, and then we'll go out to the grill. On the video for the IQ 110, they show you how to do this circle of fire. In their video, they use competition briskettes. Last time I tried using lump charcoal, and it didn't work out so well. Well, while at Costco this week, they had the Kingsford competition briskettes. A ba double bag on for just a little bit more than a single bag is at the regular supermarket. So I got me some. In the video they said to do between 50 and 75 briskets. So I did 65. That seemed to fill it up alright. Cheating a little bit though here at the end. I'm going to start it on the left side over here. On the end here I put some lunk charcoal. You can see that there and there and there. Down in there it burns longer and hotter so that way if I get near the end I should hopefully be able to get the whole cook in this piece here and this piece down here will be put on this area once the two yes two starter cubes get the coals going in the video they suggested using two cubes so that's what I'm doing I only really was gonna put the wood halfway because around halfway I'm expecting to hit 165 and I'm gonna use the Texas crush to uh, wrap the brisket in foil to make it moist so you don't need smoke anymore after that it's just cooking both cubes are lit and going from the research I did on the internet about these briskets they'll say it takes about 12 minutes for them to get to the right temperature then I will uh, cover it all up and turn on the IQ 110 Start aiming for the 250 I need. The charcoal is lit. The IQ 110 is working. The pit's at 205 right now. Heading to what will be on here, 240, but it'll say 250 out there. As you can see right now, at least I hope you can, it's blinking green, meaning it's still under temperature. But it's it's climbing 210 heading on its way to 250 but most likely 240 on here brisket went on I put it fat side down I know a lot of people like to put it fat side up and have it render down as it gets hot but I'm gonna wrap mine at 165 and that's when fat starts rendering so fat side down to protect it from the heat then I turn it over at 165 when I wrap it observation so far I didn't watch it this closely before it blows really really hard till about 15 degrees before 250 or whatever and then the fan goes off and it lets it coast up to the right temperature so it's a pretty smart little brain worked well the first time we'll see how it works now the meat's been on for two hours and the IQ 110 is doing a wonderful job keeping it at one at 246 to 248 the whole two hours Unfortunately, it's time to spritz. That's going to change everything. I'm using uh, beef stock to spritz it with. Wish me luck. The water pan had done its job and the brisket was still very moist and didn't really need to be spritzed. But I went ahead and spritzed it some anyway. Pit drop down or the temperature dropped down to about 230 and is on back up to 243 qu rather quickly. So everything is going according to plan. 
the Maverick says it's at 163. It's about time to actually take it and wrap it. However, I just really looked at it while ago. It's looking so moist and good. I decided I'm not going to wrap it. I'm just going to let it cook like this the rest of the way through. I actually flipped it over so that the fat cap was on top now so it can baste itself and I'm going to let it cook all the way to 203 degrees maybe spritzing it every couple hours but I'm not going to wrap it this time I'm glad to see I'm not the crazy one the pitmaster IQ is beginning to have a little trouble itself it's gone from 240 to 260 back down to 240 back up to 260 so uh, that's what I used to do, but at least I'm not having to stand here and do it. And it's, it's actually keeping it around, most part, 240, 248, 249. I just opened it up and showed you all it, so it's at, uh, it's at 226 right now. Well, according to the Maverick, the brisket's hit 198. That's when you take it off, wrap it in foil, stick it in a cooler for two hours and let the last five degrees ease up. Here's the IQ saying it's right at 250. And here's the Maverick agreeing with it saying it's 153 and the meat's at 198. Let's see the meat now. Oh wow. Look at that. Camera can't do that justice I'm sure. Wow. That's a pretty looking piece of meat. Wow. Sorry, that's all I can say. <laughs> I gotta wait two hours before I can eat this. Turned out to be about a nine hour, actually about a nine hour and 15 minute cook. And you can tell the last bit of wood I put over here is beginning to catch on fire, so it had a little bit of time left. But they say to expect about an hour, hour and 15 minutes per pound. It started out at nine pounds, the brisket did. And then I cut off a lot, so it was probably right around 8 pounds, so 9 hours and 15 minutes. That makes about right. Got it inside and thought y'all might like to see it in enough light to actually see it. So. Wow. Sorry. It looks wonderful to me. A lot of good crust. A lot of like the color, like everything. I'm gonna enjoy eating this one. Well, the Pitmaster IQ did what it was supposed to. The last couple three hours, it kept it at around 155 for the whole cook. Had a little bit of time when it hit the 165, which is when the the meat starts tightening it up and it starts pushing out the moisture inside of it, so it starts evaporating, starts cooling the meat. So it takes a while. So it had a little hard time heating up and cooling down during that period. But once uh, once it did a couple of cycles, it settled right in at 255 and finished the cook perfectly. As I said, now I'm having to wait two hours to try it. It's going to be a very, 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 very long two hours. Not much of a smoke ring to speak of, but it's so nice and juicy and tender. Just pulls right apart, just as tender as you can, as you can guess. Tastes wonderful. Looks wonderful. It's one of my favorite best briskets I've done. Sorry. It's just that good. That's it for this edition of the Gadget Gardener. Have a good night.